Hello and welcome to Witness. I'm Raghi Omar. The United Nations report on climate change, released in Paris recently, has made for grim reading. 2,000 scientists from 130 countries concluded that man is probably responsible for global warming and that climate change could threaten world peace and prosperity. Kabara, a remote Pacific island, is about as far away from Paris as you can get. It's a picture postcard image, white sandy beaches framed by palm trees and tranquil blue waters. Its 400 or so inhabitants appear to live a life of unhurried self-sufficiency. But as the UN report predicts, this tiny island could be running out of time. Like all the inhabitants of Kabara, Panina Moche lives by a simple rule. If you don't catch it or grow it, the chances are you won't eat. But here, where seafood was once so plentiful, Panina now struggles to catch enough fish to feed her family. Tanya Peterson and Nick Turner went to Fiji to see for themselves the effects of climate change. For a day of fishing, I go down to the beach, prepare my basket of bait, and I put charcoal on my face, protect it from the sun and the salt water. Fishing takes so much longer now. It can take four to five hours to get enough for a meal. And sometimes even that isn't enough for a meal. Kambara, a 32 square kilometer island in the remote Lao archipelago. It's one of over 300 Pacific Islands which make up the Republic of Fiji. There are no casual visitors to Kambara. To get here, it takes an hour's flight from Vitilevu Island, Fiji's largest, to Lakemba Island, and from there a five-hour boat ride, which is fine by Kambarans. Unlike some Pacific communities, they haven't embraced tourism. The population of Kambara has halved in the last few decades. There are now just over 400 inhabitants who aspire to be as self-sufficient as their forebears. Here, it looks as if there's all the time in the world. In fact, for Kambarans, time could be running out. Penina Motte lives in Ndu village, one of four on Kambara, with her husband Sreli and their family. She's lived here all her life. There are no supermarkets here, and supplies from the outside world are scarce. Kambarans live by a simple rule. If you don't grow it or catch it, the chances are you won't eat. But in Panina Motte's experience, this is a rule that's getting harder and harder to live by. There's been a lot of changes in the sea. There's virtually no fish there now. Honestly, not even the small fish can survive because the coral is so badly damaged. It's been bleached white. Rising sea temperatures caused by global warming have damaged the health of Kambara's coral reef. As healthy coral supports a wealth of marine species, fish too are under threat. In the past, there were many people on the island, but the seafood was plentiful and rich. But now Kambara is empty. It's very difficult to find seafood. It's not that we've overfished, but we've noticed big changes in the climate. The sun's very hot and the high waves kill the sea life we rely on. This is what I believe has caused the shortage of seafood. Today marks something of a turning point for the villages of Undu. This 5,000 gallon water tank is one of 13 arriving on the island and will replace an older leaking tank. 
The arrival of the water tank is a great help to our community because water is very important to us in our daily life. We really need water. The tank's arrival is so helpful, a little rain should be enough to fill it up. Yes, the gathering will collect the water and take it straight down to the tank. Now we don't have to go to the village tank. It's been so tiring. Yes. Fresh water is a precious commodity on Kambara. There are no natural rivers or lakes on the island, so villagers are totally dependent on shallow wells and rainfall. In the past, Islanders could collect enough water from the torrential downpours of the rainy season to get them through the dry periods. But in recent years, there hasn't been a rainy season. Penina's husband, Sreli, is struggling to grow crops in the new climate. I've been growing here for about the last five to 10 years, and I really have noticed some big changes. In the past, we used to, for instance, with cassava, just throw the branches around and it would just grow wild. But now we plant the cassava and it still won't grow. This has become a really hopeless problem for us over the past few years. We're experiencing such a tremendous amount of heat. You see rain falling for just a short time. Clouds form and then they just fade away. One plant with real versatility is the coconut, and not just for cooking. The coconut, it's like the tree of life to us. When there's no rainwater, we depend on the coconuts for juice. When there's severe dry spells, things get really bad because then the coconuts fall off the trees prematurely. For some, the rigors of everyday life have proved too much. The young especially have been attracted to Fiji's larger, more developed islands. And if things continue, life on Kambara may just not be viable for anyone. Those who stay do what Kambarans have always done. The men carve wood and the women weave. Our grandmothers told us stories about the good life they had, and life then really did seem much easier. They shared their work, handicraft knowledge was passed on, and there was a barter system based on need. Even going fishing wasn't so tough. We would like these difficulties to end with us, the present generation, but we don't know God's plan for us and what we'll face tomorrow with our children. While the men of Kambara tend vegetables, it's the women who are renowned for their fishing skills, and Penina Motte is no exception. It was pretty hard work today. I was really tired looking for fish under the rocks. The fish are pretty scarce. They don't even want to bite the bait. There are so few fish around, especially under the rocks. But I'm happy with the catch. We've got a lot of fish to feed the family. You know, tomorrow we have to prepare for the men of God and for the visitors. These are the kind of things we have to prepare for on a Saturday, but now we'll be able to have a proper family meal. This small island not only struggles with erratic rainfall and dwindling fish stock, it's also at the mercy of storms and cyclones, which evidence suggests are becoming more frequent and more powerful than ever. Panina's approach is twofold. Tomorrow, she is expecting a visit not only from a man of God, 
but also a man of science. For years, skeptics have claimed global warming is part of the Earth's natural cycle, but don't tell that to a Kabaran whose island home could soon be lost to the rising tide. Music